everyone i am anuit kumar welcome to key concepts in today's video we are going to discuss about the origin and developments that led with uh, vldc motors so before starting the today's video uh, we have to discuss what are the key concept that we have discussed in our last lecture in our last lecture we have discussed the concept of synchronism and concept that related to the synchronous motor and then we have discussed the working principle and different uh, like uh, structures that is possible with uh, pmsm motors and what are the different difference between uh, synchronous motor and pmsm motor with respect to their structure okay and uh, then we have discussed the rotor possibilities what are the different rotor possibilities that possible with uh, like pmsm motors that we have we have discussed all these points and then we have discussed the concept of bindings and uh, what are the major reason behind it what are the basic ideas that related to the different type of concentrated or uh, like distributive bindings okay and then we have seen then what are the advantage of distributive binding over the concentrated binding okay so let's so let's start with today's uh, session in today's session we are going to discuss about first the session we we are going to uh, discuss about uh, the development that is related to brushed dc motor as the topic was the development and origin related to the like uh, brushless direct current motor why we are studying this uh, brushed direct current motor as the questions comes to your mind the answer for this question that we know that the brushless direct current motors are basically originated from brushed direct current motors okay only the difference that we uh, achieved by uh, removing the like brushes and commutator setup by electronic commutation as in another word we can say like the we remove the mechanical commutation by electronic commutation okay so this is the major difference so first we uh, try to understand the basic development happens with brushed dc motor and then slowly we shift our uh, attention toward the, uh, the concept and uh, the, what are the developments that is related to the brushed dc motor brushless dc motor okay so let's let's start with uh, this brushed dc motor developments okay the first motor is developed brushless brushed dc motor basically developed or invented by uh, invented in nice actually 18 so the first brushed dc motor was invented in 1856 by a german inventor and industrialist Werner von Siemens so he is the guy who is founder of this Siemens company if you are electrical guy you might be aware of this company he is a, this company is one of the biggest leader in motor manufacturing as well as like all type of motors and it has a different businesses but it's a public company and he is one of the leader in especially in motor manufacturing okay and Siemens was invented a uh, tele graph and he used these motors like what are the motors you can see these motors are basically used in this particular application okay that was basically uh, to send uh, like messages by using mos code and one more thing this particular motor actually is a self excited motor and uh, self like the dc motor that is a first uh, like self excited motor motor which is found uh, by when we talk about the concept of self excited and uh, self excited try to understand just try to provide you just try to understand what it mean if you are aware of the dc motor application or dc motor you may understand the concept of self excited and the separately excited so we have this concept like separately excited okay and the self excited okay and this is a sun type okay actually is a uh so you can say it's a self excited self excitation it means whatever the dc power supply that you are feeding to this particular terminal okay that same power supply is go to the field winding and the same for current will be going to the armature okay and here this is some some shaft is connected so like something like that the moment will be there when you talk about the separately excited whatever the dc you can say the dc power supply which is uh, will be feed it to this particular terminal but you can see there is one a separate power supply which may be supplied to this terminal okay 
So we have a different DC power supply, we have a different armature supply, actually though for that we need two power supply for separately excited, okay. And uh, you can say the one power supply for self excited. So definitely we have, we always try to prefer the lesser number of excitation as well as the less number of power supplies, okay. So what's next happen? There is one more guy who uh, like interested, if you talk about the any motor, we always interested to control the speed of the motor, okay. If we have a motor, but you, you can't control the speed, it's a very, in a lot of application you require to control the speed and for that you need some methodology or control strategy for, to control the motor speed, okay. So this is the guy who invented in 1873, okay, who basically uh, introduced the concept of rheostat, okay, and uh, like uh, rheostat basically a setup of some like you can say some resistance, uh, okay, and uh, you have this some um, move movable slider, okay something like that. So while changing the position, my, just suppose after some time we have this position, we have this position. So while changing this position, you may get the different value of okay, resistance, different value of resistance, either you are sliding it uh, in the like, okay, as you can say in the left you going to reduce the resistance value if you are sliding toward the left right actually you are going to increase the resistance value okay and as we know that while increasing or decreasing the resistance we may control the like uh, like voltage okay to the motor okay so we know that v is equal to ir so while uh, changing your uh, resistance okay or increasing or decreasing you may change if you, you definitely if you're locking a current section definitely you're going to change the voltage value and that voltage is basically uh, like dependent parameter for the speed so if the speed is increasing it means that you are increasing the voltage so that's the basic concept that is the voltage is proportional to a speed okay and the current is proportional to torque so that's the basic assumption you can understand from the electrical engineering for the main like machine's perspective okay so by using this if you can see the setup it has some like uh, we have some like power supply okay and that power supply have some starters and then we have some real estate setup you can say this is the slider point okay while changing the different positions you may get the different resistance value and that particular resistance value may uh, like supply it to the uh, by using this by controlling this resistance value you may control the voltage so you can supply this particular uh, updated voltage to the motor and based on your voltage it the motor speed will get decided so you now it is by using this real state concept you are capable to control the motor operation or like you can control the speed okay till now uh, if you can see the development happens with uh, with the help of real state and uh, we know that the resistance always uh, dissipate energy in the form of resistance so we we are supplying the same power but resistance what it does it will like like it's just consume or dissipate uh, like uh, current or like energy in the form of feed so basically it's considered to be the loss so the system efficiency is get poor by using this concept the system efficient uh, by using this concept the system efficiencies get reduced so what i have discussed like by using the real state we are basically dissipating uh, like we are dissipating uh, the energy in the form of heat basically okay and uh, that is a wasting of our electrical energy we don't need to do that okay so what we are looking at, we are looking at some control methodology in which we can uh, reduce or remove that losses with respect to the real state or like resistive. Okay. 
so what we will uh, what we did we have some uh, dc motor okay we have some dc motor and, and definitely uh, we have some power supply okay if we if you as a practical section if you have a dc power supply so you have to convert it into the ac power supply okay and then what you did uh, you convert then you convert ac to dc conversion okay and ac to dc conversion that you have to make and then while controlling this particular section you may control the aptitude okay or the another way you may use the ac uh, power supply frequency okay to control the like the voltage at the motor terminal and you know that the voltage is basically proportional to the speed okay so if we have this field winding okay and this field winding is having some ac power supply okay and uh, while changing or controlling the ac power supply frequency or a, like magnitude of this particular uh, uh, like uh, ac power supply we may control the voltage at uh, dc motor okay as a field winding at a different dimensionology sometime we are using armature control or like a armature control uh, like methodology in which we are controlling the voltage at armature terminal so while we using any aspect like uh, while controlling the voltage we are basically controlling the speed so that is what I, what we are looking at so till now what are the development that happens with brushed dc motor that looks good the efficiency also get increased but still we have some issue with their there uh, like you can say the limitation that comes with their brushes and uh, commutator setup okay that causes uh, the two major factor I, as i discussed in our last videos that it has some sparks on the brushes terminal and that uh, limits these motors to used uh, where we can't afford any type of spark like if you, if you can say there are very sensitive areas like uh, gas stations some application where you you can't permit these sparks so we use in these applications uh, like we we are we start looking for uh, such motor we doesn't have he doesn't have any type of uh, these type of sparks and the one on the another uh, major point to go ahead with some further motor development is it has a it's a, these motors actually required a frequent maintenance okay and these uh, points are like uh, start like pushes to start so these points like uh, uh, creates to start looking so these points basically uh, like uh, so these limitations are like pushes to uh, like so these are the so th so these are the major regions why we start looking for new type of motor methodologies or a new type of motor control uh, strategies to control the or we are start looking for the new type of motor methodologies okay so now while understanding this concept you may understand why we required electronic commutation to avoid these limitations for the limitations of brushed dc motor okay okay even though like uh, we once we started these uh, in like conversion section like by using some electronic regulators we may uh, like increase the efficiency of the brushed dc motor so uh, that's the engineers start thinking that why we not do some modification in the design with respect to the motor and then we start looking for or like uh, we like we may uh, design some different type of motor that may uh, uh, doesn't require any type of the mechanical commutation okay so there are the concepts come that we have some dc power supply we convert it into the ac okay ac it means alternating uh, current or electrical cycle that depends in which type of motor if it is pmsm we, we have the sinusoidal if we have the bldc we have a triple cycle that we have already discussed in our last lectures okay if you didn't watch this concept you i i explain more than 3 to 4 we three videos on this particular session so you just go and just watch this concept okay and what we are doing we have some uh, 
like soft position sensing for the closed loop operation then we have to sense it some log control logic that we have and again based on that so basically this session uh, this actually uh, concept of control system okay so uh, these uh, have some okay some control methodologies in which we can control the uh, desired output like whatever they fear talking about the speed of this motor that can be controlled by these logics okay the logics is basically uh, may uh, have some like you can say uh, mcu concept some mcus okay and uh, this is basically uh, mostly the concept of inverters okay and while controlling the like gate pulses of in inverter we can control like these it, it consists of switches so while controlling these switches uh, we may control the voltage okay and that voltage is directly related to the speed of the motor so we can we can control the motor speed okay and uh, we have these switches and uh, while controlling these uh, switches operations we may control the whole motor operation okay so that's the uh, basic basic idea about the product now we are discuss about the development of brushless direct current motors okay so as we have discussed these motors doesn't have any uh, physical contact with the uh, rotary part so it has a high efficiency and high reliability okay and uh, due to this uh, we may use these a uh, motors in various applications like the very famous applications like uh, the computer hard disk drives uh, the mostly rpm will be like 4500 uh, okay so it, if you can see it's uh, this is uh, the one of one of the, like uh, picture of the computer uh, like disk drive okay so as you can see it's a very small in size and it can achieve uh, 4500 rpms so this is one because it doesn't have required any brushes and also the size is very much like uh, impressively uh, small okay so uh, in the same way while uh, using this uh, idea we may use this motors in robotics in aircraft different applications okay uh, the same concept like uh, while uh, some different applications where we have some limitations related to the brushed DC motor we have uh, we can use these motors as we can see this aircraft mostly required very low humidity and uh, if we have the brushes it has some limitation but if you doesn't have any uh, wear and tear so that will be uh, more suitable for the like uh, these type of application okay the same way uh, we have uh, like uh, this particular motor technology uh, that really uh, like uh, increase the application areas okay where we have to use these motors so uh, just uh, just for overview what is actually a basic log diagram that is related to the electronic commutation so first we try to understand what is the need of electronic commutation as we know that any motor having uh, like we have some field winding okay or like we have we can first we can say uh, we have some field and we have some okay we have some armature so most mostly field always have the DC supply okay in case of uh, VLDC we have uh, this one is a permanent magnet okay we have this permanent magnet and armature winding or a, we can say at a stator we always require AC alternating current okay to produce variable time variable flux and that causes to rotate the motor okay we always need a relative motion between uh, like uh, two fields okay that can be possible by by uh, field having a motion that it can rotate and uh, as a ac we need a time variant uh, like uh, current so that will produce a variable flux okay so how we are going to achieve so as you can see if you considering this motor as a VLDC so we have something like that you can consider some or PMSM I'm just considering it as PMSM so it has something like three phases that we have okay 
and uh, as an input as a part of input we have something like that uh, we have some uh, you can say some DC power supply as you can we can consider it like uh, 24 volt okay we have 24 volt DC power supply how we can convert it so so mostly what happens these uh, terminals like these terminals okay these uh, MOSFET terminals what are the terminals okay uh, that is feed it with 24 volt okay 24 volt it has a common circuit you can say it's any terminal of the point it has some 24 volts so all buses having the same value of 24 volt okay and uh, we have these terminals gate terminals okay these gate terminals okay it's a three phase uh, motor and we have six actually a uh, six mosfets okay and these uh, PWM pins are basically uh, connected with these uh, like uh, MCU okay and while controlling the PWM pin on cycle and off cycle or you can say duty cycle we can control the on off time of these MOSFETs okay and while changing the on and off time for like on and off time of these MOSFETs we may control the aptitude or a magnitude of the AC voltage okay if you are owning it for the fall of for long duration of time the amplitude value or like whatever the value that we have that that may get increased so the waveform something like that it will be have some it has some different like high amplitude and we know that if we are saying so it's like vm is well high so directly indirectly vrms is also high and as we have discussed like the voltage is always proportional to speed of the motor so what we are basically trying to achieve we try to control the motor speed by controlling the voltage and that we are using by this mco okay while this mco it we are controlling the pwm like first with modulation we are controlling this uh, on and off cycle of this particular PWM gate pulse and while uh, controlling this we are uh, controlling the on off duration of these uh, MOSFETs and these MOSFETs on, off, on and off time are basically decided these uh, uh, like aptitude or magnitude of this voltage and this voltage magnitude is actually uh, like if we have we are able to control this voltage we are capable to control the motor speed okay so as you understand that how we are uh, achieving this particular uh, motor speed strategy or like the activity by using the electronic commodity.